Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video about my city builder game and today I'm going to be filming a whole day of development. So the last devlog video was full of game development, there was loads of progress to show, lots of new stuff, lots of visual changes in the game, which was all great. This devlog video, kind of going to be the opposite. The problem is that when I'm developing a new feature, the first half is really interesting. The progress is fast, there's lots to show in the game, lots of things are changing, and it's really good for devlogs. But once I've implemented that basic feature, the second half can sometimes be a bit more boring. It involves a lot of finishing off loose ends, handling edge cases, bug fixing and tidying up code, optimizing, and not that much is visually changing in the game, so it's not the best time for devlog videos. And that's kind of where we are at the moment. Previously with this project, I've just not made devlog videos during the second half of the feature, but I'm trying to make more regular videos again now, so I thought I would just try filming a whole day. I can show you the sort of tasks I'm working on, I can show you what my work day looks like, and hopefully some of you will find that interesting, and if not, then no problem, I'll still be making the other devlog videos when there's a bit more content to show you. So before I completely put you off the idea of this devlog video, I'm going to get started for the day. It is 8.30 at the moment, I'm just about to start programming, and I'll show you what I'm working on in a bit. The main thing I've been working on since the last devlog video is trying to get the activity system working with the saving and loading of the game so that when the player saves the game it also saves the progress of all the activities that all the people in the game are doing so that when you load the game they continue from where they left off instead of starting the activity again. And mostly this involves me just going through all the code for the actions, for the animations, for the activities and deciding what exactly needs to be written to the save file in order to reconstruct the activity um, when the game loads up and reconstruct it in the same state that it was in when the game got saved. So it's a bit of an annoying task and there's still quite a bit to do, so I'm just working on it a little bit every day. Another thing I've been working on recently are the edge cases for the activity system, so what happens if things don't go to plan. For example, there's a lot of people going to this restaurant here and if I try deleting that restaurant the game just crashes because the activity system can't handle it, something's gone wrong, it can't complete its action, and uh, it doesn't like that. So I've been working on trying to make the activity system a bit more flexible and to be able to handle things not always going to plan. So in the code I've made a change here, the actions, uh, instead of just saying whether they're finished or not, they now have a status, and that status can either be running, passed, or failed, which means that actions, when they're finished, they can now either pass or fail. Um, and that means I can start building failure into the behavior trees, so I can start doing things like do this action, and if that action fails, then try this instead, and if that fails, try this instead. So that allows the activities to handle the situation um, even when certain actions fail. By the way, before I forget, this is the article I've been using a lot to learn about behavior trees, so if you're new to the topic and you want to learn about them, this is a really good starting point gives a nice overview of what they are, how they work, and there's quite a few examples in there as well. I've just been creating a new node for the behavior trees, which is going to help with the handling failure stuff, and that's called a selector node. Up until now, I've been using a lot of a node called a sequence node, which looks like this. It's got multiple activity children, and it carries out those children one by one. So it will do the first activity, and when that's done, it moves on to the next one. When that's done, it moves on to the next one, and so on until one of those children fails, and if one of those activities fails, then it itself fails and stops. The select node is similar, it also has multiple children, and it also goes through them one by one, but it does that until one of them passes. So it will try the first activity, but if that fails, it's no problem, it does the next one. If that fails, again, it tries the next one, and if that passes, then it stops, and it itself passes. So this one's obviously good for kind of having a backup plan for when one activity fails. So it's 11 o'clock now, I'm just going to take a quick break, I want to prepare some food in the kitchen. Um, I've been enjoying pickled onions recently, so I'm just going to prepare some of them so that they'll be ready to enjoy in a few days time.
Okay, so I've got a basic example of the handling failure stuff working now. This guy in the car here, he's on his way home. He's doing the going home activity and his home's on the right there. So if I mess with him a bit and delete one of the roads, it's okay, he can handle that. He'll go in the, he'll go the other way around. Uh, but if I delete that road, then the whole activity fails because it's now impossible and that's okay. He goes to do something else instead. In this case, it looks like he's going to the pub. So that's the first example of an activity being stopped halfway through because it, it can't continue and he goes to do something else instead. So I think this is a good point for me to stop this morning. I'm going to have a quick lunch break and then go for a walk with Rufus. This afternoon I'm switching things up a bit and I'm going to work on one of the dev tools for the game because there's something that's been annoying me recently about creating new models for the game and that is that every building now has to have these points of interest to find. Uh, I talked about them in the last devlog video, these are all the places that a person might want to go to on the building and at the moment these are defined in the entity files. So this is the entity file for the cafe, mesh information at the top, um, a few other components here and then this is where those points of interest are defined, each one has a position and then down here um, I define how they're connected together to form a network. And at the moment I have to input all of this information manually, which is obviously not very efficient. So I want to program a tool this afternoon that can kind of automatically generate that information for me. Half past two now, just about to stop for a break. Um, I've been working on this dev tool for a while now. And the way I've decided to do it is that in Blender, I can create a mesh to show where all the points of interest are and how they're connected. Very quick and easy to make and then I can export that mesh information um, into an OBJ file. And then what I'm working on in the code here is um, a program that's going to take in that OBJ file and it's going to extract the necessary mesh information and it's then going to convert that into the format that I need for the entity file. So it's all going well, I'll continue on with that in a minute. I've just got a quick task that I want to do on the balcony now though. This year I've been planting lots of herbs out there and some of them are kind of reaching the end of their life cycles now. Um, for example, the coriander has gone to seed and I just want to quickly collect those seeds for cooking and for planting next year. Um, so I'm gonna do that while it's nice and sunny. Next up today, I've got a bit of a fun task, which I've been kind of saving for this devlog video. Um, recently I ordered myself a little 3D printed model of one of the people in the game. Um, just because when I'm working on animations, I like to have a little 3D object to kind of try the animations out on and move it around. It just kind of helps me work out the rotations. So I got this little guy and today I want to paint him. So I finished painting the top half, I need to wait for that to dry before I can hold it to paint the bottom half. Anyway, it's four o'clock now so I should really get back to programming. I've been working on the tool for a couple of hours and I've got some basic functionality I can show you now. So this is the tool here, obviously in the future it would be nice to have some proper UI, maybe even a 3D preview, but that's something for further down the line. Um, so I just need to put in the name of the OBJ file that contains that mesh information and it extracts all that information, copies it to the clipboard, and I can then just go ahead and paste it into the relevant entity file. And you can see all the generated information here. There's still a lot of work to do on this. Um, it needs to be able to support different connection types. There are multiple connection types in the game. Also, it doesn't really have to list these connections out one by one. I have added some shortcuts into the entity file format, but it's not clever enough to use them yet. But that's all stuff for another time, because I'm finished for today. My partner's also just finished work, so I think we're going to drive down to the river now, maybe hire a canoe, and sail off into the sunset. So that's it for today and for this video. 
it's been pretty busy. I made some decent progress on the game, got a few other tasks crossed off the to-do list, and I filmed this devlog video, so it's been pretty successful. Next time I'm going to be working on a new feature again, so there'll be much more game development to show you in the next video. Um, but I'll probably make videos like this now and again during the quieter parts of development. Before I finish, I need to say a big thank you to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Alexander Chavez, Adam Farkas, Andrew Witt, Caffeine Coder, Christopher Herpo, Connaughton Adventures, Dieter Reinert, Fred Mastro, Gregory Horvath, Hagen Vingard, Harry Chung, James Craig, John Needham, Marek Mikolajczyk, Matthias Bader, Miguel Diaz Rivas, Neil Blakey Milner, Sean McCrory, Simon Gander, Thomas Johnson, and Timothy Gibbons. So a massive thank you to you guys and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this video though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.